morning. Oh, well. How's everybody doing this morning? Good? Oh, nice. Hi. Well, you're all rainbowy today. Look at you. Oh. Mm-hmm. Sure do. Well, I have a question for you guys. Have, has there ever been someone or something living in your life that had to go away and you didn't get to see it again? Yeah. Your dog, Colin? Your dog? Dog? Guinea pigs, yeah. Dogs and the guinea pigs, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And a couple of fish. Cat. Your grandpa. Yeah. Your fish too? Yeah. Um, so when something like that goes away and we don't get to see it again, how do you feel? Sad, right? Yeah, very sad. Because um, sometimes we miss, especially we miss people, but we miss our animals too. Our pets become part of our family, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also um, the people in our life, sometimes people are, are gone too. Have you ever had a friend move away? Like it was your really good um, friend? Um, um, my friend, um, um, I couldn't see him again. You couldn't see him again because you moved, right? Yeah. Or did he move? Um, he moved, he moved, to moved away. He moved to a different place. Yeah, he moved to a different place. So we feel sad when this happens, right? Because we really like being with people like that. I had a friend who uh, moved to California and I was so sad when they were gone because I really missed seeing them every day. But you know what? Here's the thing, this really special thing that is a gift from God. In just a little bit, we're gonna do a thing. So I'm gonna talk a lot, like I usually do. And then we're gonna have a song and then we say something called the Apostles' Creed. And at the end of the Apostles' Creed, we say something like, I believe in the communion of saints. So I want you to listen really carefully for that. And we'll say it again when we take communion too, but the communion of saints. What word does communion sound like? Right, yeah, so it's when we dip our bread into the wine. Um, is there another word that sometimes we use in our daily life that's not communion but sounds the same? What about, what? Yes, you're right, it is. Her voice sounds familiar. Yeah, it does. She knows that word. That's really great. Um, how about community? The community is the people around us, right? The people that we live with in our daily life. And communion is the same word. So when we say we believe in the communion of saints, what we mean is we believe that even though we don't see those people and they're not right here with us anymore, even if they have died, they're here in our hearts and they are still with us as the saints, the people who taught us, who shared their life with us, even those maybe that we didn't know, they're all here with us because they're followers of God and they're in, in our hearts just along with Jesus. All of us are in each other's hearts as the communion of saints. And that's a wonderful gift that we can keep with us even when we're missing someone. And it is okay to be sad, but also just know that those people are always with us. Okay, so let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for the gift of the communion of saints. We ask that you help us to remember that even though our living things, our, our, our furry friends, and also our people friends and our people relatives um, can sometimes be gone from our lives. And while we miss them so much, they're not gone forever, especially in spirit. They are always with us in our hearts. Help us to remember that you love and care for us all, whether we're here or far away. And help us to know that you... Um, that you join us together, especially in communion. We pray this in your name. Amen. Please pray with me. Oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We've been reading from John's Gospel the last couple of weeks, and John's Gospel in Scripture is very different from the other three writers. While Matthew, Mark, and Luke, also called sometimes the synoptic, synoptic Gospels, um, write kind of in a 
narrative storytelling form a lot of the time. John writes more in the form of a testimony as if he himself is telling his story about who Jesus was and is. And it's not that these ideas don't overlap. Of course, Matthew, Mark, and John are, I mean, Matthew, Luke, and Mark are telling their story, and there's narrative in John as well. But John can be summarized well as a book that seeks to acknowledge and confirm the identity of Jesus as the Son of God. In other words, as human and divine. Some of the women in our church this fall have been studying a book entitled John, Believe I Am, and it focuses on the seven I am statements in John's gospel, which is a very strong identifying tie to the fact that Jesus does indeed come from the Father, and the Father is in him. And we hear this quite often in John's gospel. To understand this, all we need to do is look back into the second book of the Old Testament, the Torah, the sacred writings and that are still read today and studied in the temple. All we need to do is look back into Exodus when God speaks to Moses in the burning bush. Moses asks God in chapter 3, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God answers Moses, I am who I am, and I am has sent me to you. So when Jesus says things to the people like, I am the light of the world, or I am the good shepherd, I am the way, the truth, and the life, this language could easily be heard by the people as similar I am language to who God is. And John's gospel begins with, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So very much about this idea of God coming into the world, and the word was God, and God was the word. And a little further on in chapter 1, he says, The word became flesh and lived among us. And so it's with these words and this tone that we should hear the lessons today. So I want to first talk about Lazarus, the gospel story of Lazarus today. Um, this miracle was Jesus' last miracle in the book of John before he goes to Jerusalem for the Passover when he would be killed. His last, his last miracle before he goes to Jerusalem. And then also, in order to us understand the significance of this, we need to look back at the very beginning of John, after the Word was in the world and the, world, and the Word was God and the Word was in God. Um, in chapter 2, we have his first miracle, which was the wedding in Cana, where he turned water into wine. Both of these events, both of these miracles were very public affairs. And I don't think we can ignore that each of these events were major life passages, too. A wedding and a funeral. In fact, if you look in our hymnals, uh, life passages are marked by um, weddings and funerals. So this was a very public public way to start and end his ministry. A very public way at a celebration of life and a new life together in marital unity and ending in a public way by raising Lazarus from the dead while the family and all the mourners were gathered around as, a, as at a funeral. While there are other miracles and healings done in public, there are also times when Jesus tells him not to say anything, but in both of these stories, he knows that people are going to know and that the word is going to get out, and this is on purpose. Also significant to our passage today, it's important to take a look at how intelligently John lays out for us the two dimensions of Jesus that he works to portray through his whole gospel. First, Jesus has come into the world, the word made flesh who is living among us. And this point is so beautifully made as we hear the words that Jesus weeps for his friend. Jesus knows the sadness and suffering that death brings to us, to our human experience, to those of us left behind when someone leaves us. And again, as he makes his way to the tomb, he is described as being greatly disturbed. But what happens next is John's transition into the words that also teach us about the divine nature of Jesus. 
Jesus says, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took the stone away, and Jesus looks upward and says, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe you sent me. Jesus, in his last very large miracle, before he goes towards his death, is to once again show his humanity and his divinity, his oneness with God. And so it's with these thoughts, then, that we can turn to the Old Testament and the New Testament readings today. From Isaiah, then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and, dis- and the disgrace of his people will take away, he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God, we have waited for him so that he might save us. Here at Lazarus' grave, Jesus gives us a foretaste of what is to come, that God will wipe away our tears. And our disgrace will be taken away, and we will be saved through Christ, through Jesus. And then we hear from John again in the book of Revelation. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with him. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. From the throne, John hears a loud voice saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. The one seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Which sounds awfully familiar to the passage that we heard just last week on Reformation from Jeremiah that said, The days are surely coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel as the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. John is intentional about bringing hope to the people in his writing of the gospel and his book of Revelation as he draws out that all along, God has called us to be God's people. And has covenanted to be our God. God has made all things new, is making all things new. And God has made God's home among mortals, among us, the people. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And God will wipe away our tears. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. At the end of this revelation passage, John points out that God once again says, I am making all things new. And this newness comes in Christ. The hope of today's readings, of today's gospel, and the celebration of today itself, All Saints Day, is that through Christ we are made new. God, flesh and blood, knows our sorrows and our tears. God, flesh and blood, has cried tears with us. God, flesh and blood, has known and borne physical and emotional pain, even to death. God knows what it is to be human. And yet, God also knows how to make all things new. God has come to make all things new. God has brought light into the world so that the darkness cannot ever overcome it through the person of Jesus Christ, the Son, who is one with the Father and the Father is one with the Son. So it is with these things that we remember and grieve and also celebrate the saints who have gone before us They are living into the hope that has also been given to us through Christ Jesus. We too will be made new. Death has lost its sting. Death has no victory. In Corinthians it says, where death death is your victory, where, O death, is your sting. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So while today our Lazaruses will not be raised here with us as Mary and Martha's was, We live in the faith and hope that they and all of us will be raised with Christ. As God home is with mortals, the people who know God and who love God and who God knows and God loves. Amen.